Hi, it's me again, Stormy Writer. And I've come to talk to you today about a term I've come across in a book that I'm reading. It's kind of something that I was already aware of, something I myself have been doing for years. But you know when you find a word for something that just feels right and you're going, Ah oh, yeah, that's that's what I've been doing. I came across the term fluid fiction. Now, I came across this in a book that I'm reading um, about an investigative journalist who's um, kind of well, investigating the vampire subculture. And a lot of people use this term to describe their day persona from their night persona. Fluidity of personas especially in modern times of gender fluidity, has become an almost staple of day-to-day -day life. But it's something that, that people do quite often. A lot of people have a work persona and a home persona. There are certain things that they'll do or say at home which they wouldn't do work. For example, cursing you know some people where their job is they can't swear they may be around children or whatever but actually they curse like sailors that is on a most basic level those that are interested in art in whatever form of its poetry singers and they're supposed to some extent actually painters as well artists that way is that they have their own fluid fiction. How many singers, writers, do we know that don't actually write or sing under their true name? I myself go under a pseudonym of Stormy. You'd probably be surprised to know that isn't the name that I'm born with. Even singers who are known by a name also have a persona. Uh, I know Beyonce has a, I can't remember exactly, but she has a persona that she goes on when she's on stage, like Sasha Fierce or something, I think it is. I think Katy Perry as well says that she's a different person when she's on stage. So fluid fiction for me, what does that mean? As I've already mentioned, I go under the name Stormy. But it's actually not the only name I'm known by. In fact, I have nicknames, names are only known by one or two people. That is their version of me. So who are they and what are they? And how different are they from me? Well, you have, let's start with Stormy, the name that I write under. Stormy comes from a Dean Coutts novel called Odd Thomas, or the Odd Thomas series of books. Of a girl called Stormy Llewellyn. As soon as I read about that character, I was like, that's the me I wanted to be. I, she seemed like me that I could have been if I'd been born in a town rather than a spot. Maybe a city would be a better word than a town, because technically I did grow up in a town. But um, a, a city where there was more access to things like an alternative vibe. I wanted to use a whole name story Llewellyn, and I did to begin with, um, but realised that potentially there could be some copyright issues there, and I dropped the Llewellyn, and I just became Stormy. So who is Stormy? Hmm. That's a very good question. I've always thought of Stormy as the darker side of me, but maybe... Stormy's actually really the more truthful side of me. Stormy is the one who talks about being lost. Stormy is the one who thinks and ponders and looks at the what ifs. Stormy is the one who wanted things better, who 
took the pain and put it into words. Stormy is the fuck you to all the men predominantly uh, who have used me. So Stormy is clearly an extension of me. Stormy has my life, my life choices. She has my memories. She technically is the mouthpiece that I feel I could never be. I say things and think things as Stormy that I can't say or think as me. Stormy is the poetic version of me. So what other names do I go by? Well, for you, for you that have read the books, the poetry books, there's a few of you, you know that they're referenced to Black Petal. So the books are either called The Flowering of the Black Petal. We've got By Ink, By Pen and Paper, a tribute to Black Petal. And the third book, provisionally, at the moment, is called Black Pages, Black Petal. Black Petal is more than just a reference. Black Petal is me, or is Stormy. Black Petal is the nickname given to me by my lover. For him, he sees me a little bit like Stormy, a little bit like the true me. So in a way, Black Petal is a combination of these two. You've got the dark elements of Stormy, the uh, sadness, the the lot, the loss, the searching, the pain. But the petal is maybe the softer side. What is underneath all of that bravado? What's underneath all of that pain? What's underneath all the the angst and the emo-ness? Is petal the true me? Probably not. But it's probably closer. Taking those two elements and making black petal is making another part of me. Why do I use Black Petal then in my books titles? I think because Black Petal is a character. Stormy feels like a part of me because I created her. Black Petal feels like a character because somebody else has created her. The ultimate story of Black Petal Again, if you've read the poetry books, this won't be anything new to you. It's the journey of a once beautiful, well, girl who was discarded, abused and hurt and became a weed. And there, lonely, dying, unobserved by people, surrounded by beauty, somebody did take notice of the weed. And they gave her love, and they gave her passion, and they gave her emotions, and she grew. And she returned to the once beautiful rose that she once was. However, time had taken its toll. She was no longer a beautiful red rose. She was a black rose. Hence, black petal. Black Petal is the lucky one. Black Petal is the one that made it through. Black Petal is the one that took the magic of life and made it into her, her own. So what other names? What other fluid fiction do I go by? Well, for one person, who I've also created a persona for, I was known as Wixen. Wixen is a combination of a wicker vixen. So for him, 
my persona was much more still dark still something of the night about about the character but maybe because there's something more of the night about her Wixen was sensual Wixen was passionate lusty dangerous Is that something I would think of myself as? No. Definitely not. Somebody I used to be, potentially. In my teen years, I might have thought of myself more as wild. Nowadays, not so much. Why did this persona come about? Mainly because this is probably somebody that never met me in person. This is a person I only knew through the powers of social media. Therefore, it was easier for me to take on the persona that he so wanted to give me. It was easier to play that role of a Wixen when they didn't actually have to look at his face. And actually, it was a nice role to play. It was nice to be flirty. It was nice to be dangerous. It was nice to be exotic. It was nice not to be a nobody. But it was a painful experience. Because like the old age adage goes, you play with fire, you get burned. This was passion that couldn't be contained. And this was an all-consuming persona. Wixen quite soon took over. Not in day-to-day -day life. Wixen never leapt the bounds from written word. Maybe that's the difference between Stormy and Black Petal to Wixen. They are acted out. They are part of me. Wixen is literally a character written in nothing but words. Again, for those of you that read my work, the name Wixen is probably something that sounds familiar. It being the surname of the character in blood bound and yes that is intentional pandora wixen is an extension of the character that this person created the fantasies that we had created through social media was being played out in the novels so yes the person i'm referring to is my own Puppet Master. Luckily, we never met. And I say luckily because one of two things would have happened. One, and the nicer one of the two, is that he would have realised that this physical form did not meet the fiction, that fluid fiction that had been created about me. Clothes could have done something towards that, but ultimately there was not a lot I could do to change this physical body. The other thing and potentially the more dangerous thing that could have happened if we met is we would have acted out that fiction. This is why the term fiction is very interesting when you're calling it about a persona that you actually act out. How can it be fluid fiction 
if you were living that life. It's not fiction any longer. It should be a fluid reality. Because your reality is changing, depending where you are. If we'd met and we'd acted out these scenes that we'd only created in our minds, then it would become reality. A game that was already dangerous through words would have been like a drug in reality. Wixon's obsession and addiction to the puppet master was all consuming until she met her aura. And for those of you that know me, know that I have my own aura. Without that, if the fiction had been played for real, then Wixen would have been left an empty shell. And that's not a persona that anybody wants. There are probably other personas that I play that aren't named in such a characteristic way. There's obviously, as I've touched upon, there's work persona. There's the gothic persona. The horror fan. It's also the pagan persona. The person that I am during rituals, the actual ritual act itself, it's very different to a person that I am in day-to-day -day life. While the coven that I'm with, we don't give ourselves such titles. Technically, I am a high priestess. I control the ritual act. I never feel that confident, that much in control in day-to-day -day life. Even when I'm writing, I never feel as in control as I am during those moments. The spiritualness the power that I feel at that moment, I don't get anywhere else. That's another fluid fiction that I play. There's always the thought, though, that what if? What if at some point... I decided to play a fluid fiction to another role. What would happen if I took the passion, the power, the spirituality that I feel during a ritual act and apply it to a work scenario? What if for one night only I played Wixen for real? What's wrong with just being me. I think around the time that I hit puberty, which was very, very young, about nine, I kind of realised I'd never be me. The bullying and the physical torture that I went through in those years changed me. By the time I was 11, I was making up lies about me to try and make myself better. And from then, I've played a role. What is interesting for me is the third book that I mentioned, Black Pages, Black Petal, is an almost autobiographical, it's a bit late here, view of me, of Black Petal, as it's still a Black Petal version 
of me. It's still not the truth. Yeah, it thinks about the hurt. It thinks about the pain. It talks about all the horrific things that happened during my childhood. But there must have been good times. I find it hard to believe that everything in my life at those times were horrible. You know, that's still a persona. The martyr. And doing this book, I realise more and more that I am a martyr to my past. What does that mean? For writing, it's brilliant. I can explore all that through my writing, through the poetry, and through the novels. There is a little bit of me in everything I write, as probably most artists will say. But in reality, am I losing myself behind my fluid fiction? It's something me to ponder on. I hope you've enjoyed the post. See you soon.